Hi guys, my name is Melody and thanks for stopping by. And today I am going to do a TBR of books that I need to read over the summer that I've already downloaded and haven't gotten to because I am busy working on an essay. Now I will probably go into details of what that essay is about next Friday once I get that done or next week whenever I film that. What day is today? It's Saturday I think. But anyway, that's besides the point. So I'm just going to go over my TBR. Um, all the books that I've got scheduled that I want to read and what I will probably be reading next month and hopefully I'll get through everything. Now this month I only read one book and that was Molly's Game. No, actually I read two books. I read Molly's Game and wait, no, maybe I only read one book because I think the David Mitchell book was last time, but I read Molly's Game. I gave that a four stars. It's a quite a good read. It's a it's a fast read and it's not too um, deep, if you know what I mean, but it is a true story uh, about gambling and things like that and Hollywood and New York and how this one woman built up her gambling business um, uh, uh, through different aspects of her life. And I think she was basically, it came across that she was feeling inadequate because her brothers were more successful than her. Um, so she thought that she needed to do something to feel more adequate and this would be by running um, card games um, and things like that, um, uh, which was high stakes poker. So that's what that one's about. So it is actually a really good read. I gave it a four stars. Um, I didn't give it a five stars because it was not the most fantastic read, but it was a decent read. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through my Goodreads to read list and then I'm going to go through what I've already downloaded onto my Kindle and then I have a bonus item of I've got candles that I am going to tell you about because I bought some candles. Yep, I'm still kind of sort of spending money but not uh, in the way that you think. So let me just go through this and we'll get to that. So obviously, I think I had this on the last time that I talked about books that I was that I bought. Um, I've got Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. That is sitting over on my side table over there waiting to be read. I also have The Chain by Adrian McKinty, which is also sitting over there because it just recently came into paperback in the UK. So I bought that um, a few well before all this happened. Um, then I've put down, because I've already talked about this, I'm not going to go into depth with them. So I've got Forget Her Name um, on there. Oh, right. Yep. These are also ones I've downloaded onto my Kindle. So I'll just read the synopsis on here. So um, as she prepare, it's this one's here. It only has a three and a half, well, three and three quarters, 3.86 on Goodreads. As she prepares uh, for her wedding to Dominic, Catherine has never been happier or more excited about her future. But when she receives an anonymous package, a familiar snow globe with a grisly addition, the, that happiness is abruptly threatened with secrets from her past. Her older sister, Rachel, died on a skiing holiday as a child. But Rachel was no angel. She was vicious and highly disturbed, and she made Catherine's life a misery. Catherine has spent years trying to forget her dead sister's cruel tricks. Now someone has sent her Rachel's snow globe, the first in a series of ominous messages. While Catherine struggles to focus on her new life with Dominic, someone out there seems intent on torturing her. But who? And why now? She doesn't have the answers. And in one final question lies her greatest fear. Is Rachel still alive? So that's uh, a book I downloaded on Amazon on the Kindle because it was free with Amazon Prime and it looked like it should be a, a decent read. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to review, review, review that soon. Uh, the next one I've got is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. That's on my TBR on Goodreads. So let's read this. Anna Fox lives alone, a recluse in her New York City home. Unable to venture outside, she spends all day drinking wine, maybe too much, watching old movies, recalling happier times and spying on her neighbors. And then the Russells move into the house across the way, a father, a mother, their teenage son. 
the perfect family, but when Anna, gazing out her window one night, sees something she shouldn't, her world begins to crumble, and its shocking secrets are laid bare. What is real? What is imagined? Who is in danger? Who is in control? In this diabolically gripping thr thriller, no one and nothing is what it seems. And that one has a 3.94 on Goodreads. So I don't have that one downloaded, but I have it. But I'm going to check it when I get done with that. So the next one I've got is The Huntress. Let's see here. Two seconds. It's just a thing. So from the author of the New York and the USA or New York Times and USA Today, the best-selling novel, The Alice Network, never heard of it, comes another fascinating historical novel about battle-haunted English journalists and a Russian female bomber pilot who joined forces to track the Huntress, a Nazi war criminal gone to ground in America. In the aftermath of war, the hunter becomes the hunted. So it's well, that's a really long one. I'm not going to read that. So that little top bit will tell you that. So it's a bit of a spy thriller, I believe that one looks like. And it has 4.27 on Goodreads. And we've got another one that was recommended to me, which is Love and Gelato um, by Jenna Evans Welsh. Number one, apparently. So it might be a series. So let's read this one. Lena is spending a, the summer in Tuscany, but she isn't in the mood for Italy's famous sunshine and fairy tale landscape. She's only there because her mother's dying wish that she get to know her father. But what kind of father isn't around for 16 years? All Lena wants to do is get back home. But then she's suddenly given a journal that her mo mom had kept when she lived in Italy. Suddenly, Lena is uncovering a magical world of secret romances, art, and hidden bakeries. A world that inspires Lena, along with the ever so charming Wren, to follow her mother's footsteps and unearth a secret that has been kept for far too long. It's a secret that will change everything she knew about her mother, her father, and even herself. People come to Italy for love and gelato, someone tells her, but sometimes they discover much more. And that one has a 4.11. So that looks like it'd be something good. Um, I will say like a lot of mine are, I don't focus to one genre. I just focus to like things that like either will make me happy or I like it or things like that. So uh, next one is Marion Keynes, who is one of my favorite authors for like, relaxing good books good reads and they usually have something to do with like mental health or alcoholism or something like that um i believe that pertains to her own experiences so she writes her own experiences into books but they become funny um and, and heartwarming and tell life stories that's absolutely brilliant i've read all of them up to now so this one Oh, and they're Irish, by the way, pretty much all, well, all her main characters are Irish, whether or not they live in America or they, they're in Ireland and fabulous books. Okay. So their glamorous family, the Casey's, Johnny Casey's, he's his two brothers, Ed and Liam, their beautiful, talented wives and all their kids spend a lot of time together, birthday parties, anniversary celebrations, weekends away, and they're happy family fa uh, they're a happy family. Johnny's wife, Jessie, who has the most money, insists on it. Under the surface, though, conditions are murkier. While some people clash, other people like each other far too much. Everything stays under control until Ed's wife, Cara, gets concussion and can't keep her thoughts to herself. One careless remark at Johnny's birthday party with the entire family present starts Cara spilling out all their secrets. In subsequent, subsequent unraveling, everyone of the adults finds themselves wondering if it's time to finally grow up. And that one's at a 4.14. I'm sure that'll be another good read from her. I, I absolutely love her. You can follow her Twitter as well. She's absolutely hilarious. So good. Okay, so another one. And this is another one I've already got downloaded to my Kindle, which is So Lucky by Donna Porter. Um, She's married to Chris O'Dowd, um, actor, um, 
best known to me for the IT crowd, but that's basically me and I love that show because I used to be the IT support and and the always things is if I do this wrong, I am so sorry, I'm gonna give you a bad Irish accent just now. Now, which the main thing that just made me so happy about this show is he's always like, have you tried turning it off and on again? That's a bad Irish accent. I can't do accents. But that was something we used to say all the time when I worked in IT for like 10 years and you get to call people and they just never tried turning it off and on again. I have no idea why. Anyway, that aside. Anyway, the book is So Lucky by Donna Porter. Um, it's not, I don't think it has, it doesn't have a really long synopsis in here. It just says, Beth shares that woman can really have it all. Ruby lives life by her own rules. And then there's Lauren living the dream as perfect as it looks. Beth hasn't had sex in a year. Ruby feels like she's falling. Lauren's happiness is fake news and just takes one shocking event to make the truth come tumbling out. And that's a, that's all the synopsis because her synopsis are usually quite short because it just doesn't want to give everything away because like, um, I think the last book I read, um, of hers, um, can't remember what it was now. Um, but, uh, there was a, a, a shocking twist into the book as well. And I feel like, like, maybe that's the case in this one. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to find out. So this book has a 4.10 on Goodreads and I look forward to reading that one. Now, this is another one that I just learned about um, the other day, um, basically scrolling through Facebook. There's like um, a wasted literary group or something like that that I'm, that I'm a member of, and I just like scroll to see what people are reading. So I've got the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That's something that I wanted to read um, that I've put on there a few weeks ago. Um, Basically, because I'm from the South, I do love books about the South, especially like vampire novels. If you haven't read uh, the Charlene Harris True Blood series, where are you at? I love that series. Um, the, the ending books get a little bit slower, but the start of it is really good. And it's not exactly like the TV show. Uh, the TV show goes in a completely different direction than the actual books. But anyway... Southern Guys book to it, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by H Grady Hendrix, and, it, and I'm just gonna read this. It is a quite long one, okay? So fried green tomatoes and still see I can't even say it. I used to say, do you want me to say it a different way? I'll say it. I'll say it old Southern way that I used to say. Fried green tomatoes and steel magnolias meet Dracula in the southern flavored supernatural thriller set in the 90s about a woman's book club that must protect its suburban community from a mysterious and handsome stranger who turns out to be a blood-sucking fiend. Patricia Campbell has always had always planned for a big life, but after giving up her career as a nurse to marry an ambitious doctor and becoming a mother, Patricia's life has never felt smaller. The days are long, her kids are ungrateful, her husband is distant, and her to-do to list is never really done. One thing she has to look forward to is her book club, a group of Charleston brothers united only by their love of, for true crime and suspenseful fiction. In these meetings, they are much more likely to discuss the FBI's recent siege of Waco as much as the ups and downs of marriage and motherhood. But when an artistic and sensitive stranger moves into the neighborhood, the book club's meeting turn into speculation about the newcomer. Patricia is initially attracted to him, but when some local children go missing, she starts to suspect that newcomer is involved. She begins her own investigation, assuming that he's Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy. What she uncovers is far more terrifying, and soon she and her book club are the only people standing in the way between the monster they've invited into their homes and their unsuspecting community. That has a 4.14 on Goodreads, and that sounds like my kind of story. Um, true crime, uh, murder, or missing children. Like, well, I don't like missing children, but you know what I mean. Like, uh, sort of like a, a really good uh, mystery type thing. Okay, so next two books 
I'm going to read from my actual Goodreads list and then I'm going to go over to the last two I've got on my Kindle. Now these two books are for Peter's Book Club and it is the um, reads for the month of May. I'll be finished with my university by the second week of May so I can get these in nay bother. But uh, I think one of them is actually on Audible, so I'll probably do an Audible and a physical if I can get it, or a Kindle if it's on Kindle, which hopefully that is. Okay, so the first one is Dead Ends, The Pursuit, uh, Conviction, and Execution of Female Serial Killer Eileen Warner's The Damsel of Death by Joseph Michael Reynolds. Okay, so let's just read the synopsis. Uh, I imagine that most people are uh, familiar with Eileen Warnos and uh, her murder spree um, back in the 90s, early 90s. So let me just read this here. Or, well, early 90s, late 80s. In 1989, Eileen War Warnos cruised Florida's I-95 for strangers and free rides. By 90, 1990, seven of the men who had crossed her path had met their fate at the end of her 22 caliber pistol. Convicted in six of the murders, she claimed self-defense, then in turn blamed her ex-husband, her family, her lesbian lover, her defense team, the media, the Gulf War, and bum luck for the cold-blooded slayings. Written by the reporter who broke the story, this is the startling account of Borno's brutal killing spree, which led to one of the most highly publicized trials, convictions, and execution in all American crime. So that, like you say, there's not many times that you'll get a female serial killer. So that's what this, or well, there's not many times that you'll get a, let's say caught female serial killer because there's bound to be some. This one has a 3.68, um, like say is, we're going to read that for the book club. And the other book that we've got is actually by Eileen Warners herself. So it's Dear Dawn, Eileen Warners in her own words. So we'll read the synopsis for this. Oh, it's very long. Okay, so between 1989 and 1990, as we just heard, Eileen Warners, uh, a hitchhiking prostitute shot, killed, and robbed seven men in remote Florida locations. Arrested in 1991, Warnos insisted she had acted in self-defense, but the jury had little sympathy. Contem condemned to death in six separate counts, she was executed by lethal injection in 2012. An abused runaway who turned to prostitution to survive, Warnos has become an iconic of a fit iconic of vengeful women who lash out at the nearest target. She has also become a touchstone for women's prostitutes and prisoners' rights advocates. Her story has inspired a myriad of books and articles, and as well as the 2003 movie Monster, for which, a th excuse me, get my teeth back in, Charlize Theron won an Academy Award. But n until now, Warner's uncensored voice has never been heard. Dear Dawn is, is Warner's autobiography culled from her 10-year death row correspondence with beloved childhood friend Dawn Botkins, authored for publication by Warner's and edit, edited under the guidance of Botkins. The letters not only offer Warner's riveting reflections on the murders, legal battles, and media coverage, but go further, revealing her fears, obsessions, her rich humor and empathy, and her gradual disintegration as her execution approach. A candid life story told to a trusted friend, Dear Dawn, is a compelling narrative and wiring true to its source. It's got a 3.6 on Goodreads. Now I'm going to just ask this question. How true is it to the source when it's actually the person who has committed the crimes writing this? Are we to trust them and what they say? Or are we to um, trust uh, the facts and the evidence? That's the question, and we'll be looking into that. I believe we're also going to be watching Monster if it's available, and I think there's another movie um, with the lady from Designing Women in it on YouTube, but I can't remember what it's called. Go to Peter Mon's book club, um, probably attached in the link below, and have a look at it. He'll, he'll tell you more about that if you want to follow along on the uh, book club. Okay, so that is all my books uh, that I've assigned on Goodreads. However, every time I see a, 
a free book on Kindle, I'm going to download it uh, because I need all the books I can get for the summer. Okay, so I'm going to stop that. Stop that. I don't want you to do this. Uh, two seconds. I'm going to just like type it into Goodreads to find the synopsis for these books and then add them to my, my want to read. The man who played with fire. Okay, so I can't say this name really well. I'm just going to put this in here to sex. Let me just put it in my want to read. There we go. All right. So I've downloaded this as it was a free book on Amazon because I really quite like this. Uh, I, I really want to know more about this author. So it's the man who played with fire, Steg Larson, who watched all the, like uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo um, books. I love those so much. Um, Lost Files and the Hunt for an Assassin. It's by Jan Stokolasa, and it has a translator because it's obviously in Swedish. Okay, so let's read this here. When Stig Larsson died, the author of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo had been working on a true mystery that twisted out his millennium novels. The assassina assassination on February the 22nd, or 28th, sorry, 1986 of Olaf Palm the Swedish Prime Minister. It was the first time in history that a head of state had been murdered without a clue who'd done it, and on a Stockholm street at Point Blank Range. Internationally known for, sorry, internationally known for his far, fictional far-right villains, Larson was acquainted with their real-life counterparts and documented extremist activities throughout the world. For years, he'd been amassing evidence and linked their terrorist acts to what he called one of the most astounding murder cases he ever covered. Larson's archive was forgotten until journalist Jan Stoklasa was given exclusive in access to the author's secret po project. Sorry, I can't talk. In The Man Who Played With Fire, Stoklasa collects the pieces of Larson's true crime puzzle to follow the trail of intrigue, espionage, and conspiracy, conspiracy begun by one of the world's most famous thriller writers. Together, they set out to solve a mystery that no one else could. So I think that could be quite interesting read. Um, it's got 3.75. I'm not, or don't know why that is, but we'll have a look and see what's, what that's about. Now there's one more book that I've got to, you'd think I'd have all this done, wouldn't you? So, so I've got another free one. So it is Your Perfect Year by Charlotte Lucas. Okay, so a man consumed by a meaningless life is going to do something never he's never considered doing before. He's going to enjoy the day. For hyper particular publishing era Jonathan Grease, the day starts like any other with a strict morning fitness regime that will keep his divorced, easy, easily irritated, cynical, 42 year self in absolutely flawless physical condition. But all it takes to put a crimp in his routine is one small annoyance. Someone has left a leather-bound day planner with the handwriting title Your Perfect Year in his spot on his mountain bike at his fitness course. Determined to discover its owner, Jonathan opens the cal calendar to find that someone only known as H has filled it in with suggestions, tasks, and affirmative actions for each day. The more he devotes himself to locating the elusive H, the different Deeper, Jonathan is drawn into somebody, someone else's rich and generous narrative and into an attitude adjustment he desperately needs. He may have ended up with a perfect year by accident, but it seems that fate has set Jonathan on a path to healing, filling, and maybe even loving again. If only he can meet the stranger who's changing his day, life one day at a time. And see, that's like a feel-good novel. That's something just I like to read to make me feel a bit better. Because although I have this haircut, which if you can tell, has been freshly done by my husband's ratchet salon. Don't ask. He just has the shave. I didn't cut it. It's fine. Nothing has been cut besides the hair on this side. And I've just put a tint over it. So it's just to hold it, 
keep a hold of it until I can go see my hairdresser. <laughs> anyway, I don't think that'll be for at least another month or so, but anyway. Okay, 3.81, so that sounds like a pretty good read, so we'll find out uh, how that goes. Okie doke, so that is all my TBR. Um, that should keep me going for quite a while. Um, I know this is getting to be a long video, but I also wanted to do something else. Um, to let y'all know. I don't know how many people are in the UK. However, what I have done is I have bought um, some candles that I just wanted to, to show you and wax melts. So first of all, this is a wee, a wee company who makes these. They're all handmade and they're made, um, oh, where are they made? Let me just have a look here. Uh, well, they're made in England and they're called Cozy Candles and it's at cozycandles.co.uk or .co, sorry, .co, not .co.uk because I don't think they can get it. Is it Cozy Aromas? Yeah, it's Cozy Aromas. Let me just put that in here because, you know, I'm not prepared and you know I'm making this a long video. So, co cozycandles.co and let me just have a look here and they are i think it's like a husband and wife duo so yeah husband and wife um and it started in their kitchen so the first thing i want to show you is this one this one is the life is beautiful um, one and this was uh made with all the profits going to uh, I believe it's Colonel Tom, um, the we old 99 gentleman who was doing a hundred, he might be a hundred now. Oh, I think his birthday was last week, but um, he was doing a hundred laps for his birthday to raise money for the NHS. Um, I bought three of these, um, which they absolutely smell gorgeous as to donate for donating extra money to the NHS. I've also donated, uh, my, my son did a mile uh, walk the other day for the Scouts as well for it. Um, it smells absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what, it, it, maybe like, I don't know, it just smells lovely. I can't tell you. Um, but these are like limited edition ones. Um, they rate, they're donating 9,000 pounds to the NHS and to, his, and to Colonel Tom's campaign, which I think has gone well over 25 million now, which is lovely. Um, so I bought three of those um, because I was doing that. Now I've also got these wee candles as well. Um, that's morning coffee. Oh my God. It smells like roasted coffee beans. I can't wait to do it. Uh, um, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna just sniff it all day. I can't wait to burn that one. I'm currently on another candle and I don't like burning candles till I get this. I also got raspberry ripple, which smells like my favorite ice cream of which I cannot eat because of my gallbladder uh, milk. Anyway, that's beside the point. It's amazing. <laughs> And this one as well, I thought blueberry and vanilla. That is absolute. Ah, uh, it's it smells like blueberry muffins. It's just lovely. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to show you those is because it is a small business, and we need to support the small businesses the best we can. And also because I thought it was absolutely fabulous that they did the um, donation um, bit to to the NHS as well. Um, so anytime, like if I can either um, buy a product that I need, such as like I do need candle waxes because I uh, the candle waxes, um, any smelling stuff, it just kind of calms me down, uh, especially being in the house. So it's a it's a need, not a want. It, it may be a sort of want sort of product, but I consider it as a need because I like to have that sort of thing. But anyway, anytime that uh, we can support the NHS through like purchasing a product that will donate like proceeds. Now, all of that was donated and I can't believe it. So they only ran it over a week and it was 9,000 pounds, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so I would just say to anybody living in the UK, if you want to check out some nice candles, then go to 
go to that place. I'll leave the link below. Um, I'm also going to try to leave all the names of all those books I just mentioned below. And yeah, and this is the end of this very long 30 minute video. And I have hope you enjoyed me blabbing out about books because this is the video you're getting this week. And if you like me and you like this channel, if you don't mind subscribing and giving us a like and sharing with your friends and all that good stuff, it really helps. And I kind of like enjoy it because um, this is like my hobby at the moment while I'm locked in. So, well, I have other hobbies, but this is kind of a hobby too. Um, I just like to tell you people about uh, things that I'm doing. If you want uh, more review videos, I've got mundane household products that I've bought over the internet, um, personal hygiene and things like that. That was a good one. But next week for the book or, um, book video, I think I'll be talking about uh, uh, the afterlife in Greek, Roman and medieval times. Stay tuned for that one, folks, and click the notification bell if you want to hear more about history and random things. Um, so that's the end for me, and I love you guys. Stay safe, stay positive, and be hopeful because this will because we'll all get through this. I uh, love you guys again. Uh, never say it too much, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.